Howdy everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Just wanted to go through um, the book that I've been reading for the last couple of weeks. This book here, um, it is called uh, Hands-On Machine Learning with Scikit and TensorFlow. I have to say it is a great book for foundation. You can see here with the high centers use, I think it's well worth the money and if you're new to machine learning this is the way to go to read it it gives you a very good uh, bait, uh, ground or foundation to work from okay so before we get to that I just wanted to go over my blog here I posted and actually my Facebook page as well quant labs net how to attack machine learning and training room uh, zoom meeting webinar so I'm Putting this Monday, May 6, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so it's going to be a Zoom. All the information's here. You can just look it up again on my blog at quantlabs.net slash blog. How to attack machine learning and training. Zoom meeting webinar. All right. So what are some of the topics that we'll be covering? Uh, from what I read in this book, um, the ones where you can use... Uh, machine learning is an RNN uh, or recurrent neural network. Uh, specifically, and I've seen this before, is long-term short memory uh, models, uh, deep neural networks, and last chapter is reinforcement learning. The question, uh, when you go out and use a, a, a framework like Google TensorFlow, uh, are you going to build your own GPU rig or are you going to put it on the cloud? From what I read, and um, you know, you can put it up on all the major cloud service providers, AWS, Azure, Google. Uh, apparently, it's not very cheap, um, so GPU rig may be the better option. But uh, some of these simulations and training can take a couple of days, <clears throat> so be aware of that. And then the other thing is the book uh, covers uh, TensorFlow 1 because TensorFlow 2 uh, is not officially out yet, but the alpha is. And uh, go over some of the training resources for Google Flow of TensorFlow 2 um, just to throw away the concept of going through the unnecessary learning of TensorFlow 1, which, believe me, is not fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, the table of contents, just give you my overview here at the uh, publisher, O'Reilly.com. Um, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to do my best here. So um, so you have an end-to-end -end machine learning project. That's some housing project uh, regarding uh, California. It just gives you a quick high level of what's involved. You use these classifiers and different demos of it, of how to use uh, uh, handwriting from this database here, or this data set, big one. Um, so much in, in here. And then the big stuff that you'll be putting in is training models, so different uh, techniques, which you say uh, linear aggression is pretty popular, gradient uh, descent, polynomial regression, uh, logistic re set regression is another one. These are popular ones that are mentioned in the book, the pros and cons of each of the um, other ones here. So he moves into support vector machines and the different concepts, the uh, different types, linear, nonlinear, um, using regression, uh, decision trees. Uh, I can't remember this one a whole lot, but like win and match is pretty important, obviously. Um, using these entropy and purity. I think entropy is a more popular one. The different kind of complexity to speed up the entire process, including the training uh, when you run it. All these uh, hyper parameter uh, regular, regular, regularization parameters and different wings and different uh, scaling parameters you can use. It's pretty good because he goes through uh, the behind the scenes under the 
put on the map front, which is really good. So you you, you don't just rely on the map pure se per se, but understand the behind the scenes or under the hood of what excuse me what the math involves. <clears throat> so um, and then moves into all these different uh, classifiers and random forests is the big one. Obviously, ensemble learning, merging different uh, types of neural nets together. Dimensional reduction to speed up things. PCA uh, is a popular one. Uh, not even going to get into these, so I'm not so expert here. So this is now the meat of it, the neural nets and deep learning. So first thing first is you understand how up until this point, uh, chapter nine, you're using psychic learn. You realize how simple it is. Excuse me, um, but then you get more complicated by setting up your TensorFlow simulations. Uh, so he shows you the different techniques of uh, setting it up, and uh, this one, the chapter chapter ten, artificial neural net. Um, actually, this is this training a deep neural net. So this is, I, I believe, a standard neural net or an artificial neural net. Um, but this deep neural net business and how to use different parameters to fine tune it with these hyper uh, parameters. And then, as I said, chapter 11 covers the deep neural nets. Uh, all the popular stuff that you would expect is in this book, but it gives you. A lot of confidence in the terminology. It's all I'm reading it for was just to understand what, what is what in terms of terminology. So I'm not going to get into this. You obviously, you have some different ways to optimize um, and how to prevent uh, overcomplicating things. There's always a balance, of, a pro and con of each one. <clears throat> now, this was an interesting one: distribution TensorFlow across devices and servers. So if you're spanning uh, your simulation through GPUs, uh, he, he does a pretty good job through clustering or different types of uh, GPU units. Here, generally I don't think he'd be using, for chapter 13, a lot of conv convolutional neural nets. Uh, from what I read, this is more for image processing. Uh, that's pretty well it's is its uh, technique. I will say uh, the deep neural net, that's probably the most widely used in machine learning that I've seen. Uh, and that's where you're going to spend a lot of time. Once you hit this chapter, you see how com complicated it gets really fast uh, up until this point. If you're not used to the math or the multi threading and whatnot you need. <clears throat> As I said, the combinational neural nets for uh, images. Recurrent neural nets is interesting because I've heard about um, LSTM, long short term memory. And uh, this is where a lot of the um, machine learning is for because it's, I believe it's built for uh, time series, meaning financial data. So this is the most applicable in the world of finance. Deep RNMs, training them, uh, and so on and so forth. Autoencoders is an interesting one. I think that's kind of complicated in itself. PCI, I know that's kind of used throughout some financial. Uh, but uh, I think the best thing to do is to use these, uh, or the whole book is just a general usage, <clears throat> uh, reading what it is if you're new to all this, to prevent yourself from uh, pulling your hair out, basically. It's good for that. I mean, this book is really good even for more advanced stuff. But, uh, you know, you have a lot of resources out there online to narrow in in these topics, which I plan to do. Obviously, everything's done in Python as well. Now, reinforcement learning is another one that's potentially used for 
excuse me, it's used for uh, um, financial somewhere in here uh, where, you, where you see these games built out, and just Q learning, deep Q learning, uh, any Atari game supposedly. Uh, Markov chain is another one of decision processes. Uh, and uh, building all these policies as well. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, when you get into the appendices, these are the answers, so it's kind of like a, a course. So that's good if, if you go that route. For me, if you're really into the math, this is it in the appendices. These are all the different other type, types of techniques that you can use uh, and concepts. Uh, outside of what you already know, and other popular AM architectures as well. So, they cover some of the other techniques here. Uh, I haven't heard of these before, so obviously, they're not in, we'll say, in the mainstream. So, overall, it's an excellent book. As I said, you want to build foundation, this is where to start. I'm kind of glad I was directed towards this, so I saved myself a lot of time and pain. Uh, I'll be reading uh, two other books that are older. Um, but uh, if you want more modern stuff, this is the way. And uh, I believe there's now a newer version of $80. It includes both these uh, frameworks, the Psychic Learn and TensorFlow. But there's a, a newer one that just came out a few weeks ago called Carass, with Carass. Um, but again, I think you'll, if you're planning to use TensorFlow 2, from what I've seen, it's radically changed between TensorFlow 1 and 2. So you may want to just stick with the basics, but if you want to have a, a, an appreciation of how TensorFlow 1 works, that this is your combo to get. Uh, hopefully I'll uh, answer all your uh, questions here, and uh, we shall talk to you later. Thanks for watching.